hello guys so i really wanted to do a full video recording of this course but in the process of recording my gen went off so the lights the recording stopped so let me show you how we started this is how we started with all these thoughts by the side and let's check our before and our after if you see the before and the after there is no much thing that was done Although I came here and I selected the subject and I made the skin a little bit brighter than darken the background a little, just a little. So that is all I have done for the image. So let's go and say cancel. So when I brought it here, it was like this. So I had to remove this stuff, then crop it to Instagram size. So this is the point where I am now. So I'm going to duplicate this and then select the subject out from that one because I deleted the area I've reached before. I'm going to delete this so I have my background separate. So at this point, I'm just going to start brushing to clean the background. So I'm using my uh, paint brush to clean the background. So I'll just brush, brush. So... Brush. So I'm just trying to clean the image. Now, whatever cleaning you're doing, don't worry about the under because we are going to show add a smoke to it, but you really need to see how we are going to transform this image. That's why it's very necessary for you to look at it. So after doing all of this, all of this, sorry, still loading. So let's clean this up. Clean this up. Then I want to turn on my network because I want to use um I want to use Pinterest to look for the smoke that I'm going to place under. And the reason why I'm doing this class is because I did I did another picture and a lot of persons were loving the picture. So I said it would be nice if I show you guys how I did the picture. So this is my Pinterest. It's always open. Smoke. Smoke effects green i used green smoke green smoke effects so i got this is exactly what i got when i typed in the message on the on the description box so let's look for a smoke that would work there are a lot of smoke here that would work so let's go back to the Beningin and start looking at a uh, few of them. I want something that will look like a real smoke popping from an angle. I'm not even seeing that exact one I used yesterday. But it's fine. Let's just pick any one. And let's pick this one. Let's click on this one. This will show us more smoke. So we'll just see if we we'll have something to go with. Uh, let's just go with this. No, I don't think I like that because of those uh, those dots that are there. Let's go with this. So let's open it in full view. Maybe that will increase the resolution a little. Then we'll bring it to Photoshop and we'll paste it. Just keep it like this. Bring it to the top. Then change the blend mode to screen. So that's what I did then, maybe L to darken, darken it a little. Then I'll try and make sure I blend it to the background. So I fade it in a little and you can warp it. You can warp it the way you want. 
So we just use brush and paint away the edge. Use a regular brush and paint away the edge of the smoke. Then we can duplicate it. Ctrl T. Change the, the direction and keep it like this. Warp again so it will not look it will not look same. Then bring this out a little. Then we'll go back and pick another smoke. Go back and pick another. All the smoke that I'm seeing here, they are good smoke, but I don't like it. I don't feel it will give me the vibe that I'm looking at. So let me just scroll down a little. Let me scroll down and uh, let me go with this one. Copy, bring it in, paste, Ctrl C. First, because of these two lines that I'm seeing, I'm going to press Ctrl L, then bring the blacks in, and also bring the whites in. So that check, that check like stuff I'm seeing there will not be there. Then screen, push it down, bring the blend mode down a little. Then Ctrl J, invert, invert it and keep it this way. So when you do all of that, you can still bring down the opacity a little, bring down the opacity. Do all of that, bring down the opacity. Put, all, put them all in a group. Then use your regular brush and just paint out, out of the, out of that mask. The first thing you can do is maybe you just select a and do this so you can go back and maybe still reduce this a little i don't like the effect i'm seeing at these two edge i like what i'm seeing here so i'm going to duplicate this again put it like this so whatever i'm doing in here will not be affecting the image because i've already built a mask so Every single one of them just to bring down the opacity. So we can actually keep it like this, but I think these two I'm not enjoying them. So let's bring it down. Yeah, so we can we can actually keep our background like this. So we have moved from here to here. From here to here. So the next thing I want to do is make this part of the image bigger than the the downside. So we are going to measure everything together then come to liquefy. When we come to liquefy, the first thing we want to do is grab a brush. Look at what I'm using to just make this side bigger. Now, I'm just trying to make people feel like the lens itself was a very big lens. Sorry. Just make people feel like the lens itself is very very wide so let's do this then we'll go back to this one make this side smaller to make it bigger So we move from here, from here to here, here to here, here to here. So we have increased her a little compared to the way it was. We have reduced our, our legs. We have reduced our legs so that our face will be looking very big. Then we'll say, okay. Just bring this out a little and say, okay. 
then probably control J, all your control T, <laughs> sorry, and then make the perspective like this. So in other words, every single thing that we are doing, we are just distorting the image. So say OK, then Ctrl T, resize it. Then we have moved from here to here. So before, because the image, because I did a cutout on the image, the hand, this edge of the hand is not looking too nice. This edge of the hand. So what will I do? I'll just use my blur brush, blur tool to just touch the edge. Now, while you're doing that, it will also help people not to feel you did a cutout on the image because it's not always nice when somebody can detect where you did your cutting from. So it's very, very nice that we are doing this. We do it for the hair also. So it will blend with the other blood behind. So if you can do every part of the image like this, it will be a good thing. But sometimes if you don't have all the time you need, it might be disturbing, but just try as much as possible to create that thing that will make people not feel like the image itself was a cutout. So we'll go back and bring one of the smoke. Bring one of the smoke and the... So as you can see, it's already covering towards our, hand, our face. So let's duplicate this first. Then let's paint away from the face. Let's paint it away from the face. Or we can bring it into this side a little. Then go to this one. Make sure it's at this other side. Then mask it. Then paint it away from the top. So those two also, you can bring the opacity down. And bring the opacity down. So we have this looking, this image that is looking like this. Nobody will be able to detect how the original image was if you do it very well. So we now have this image that you're seeing. So we we'll merge everything together again. Then I'll go use my retouch for me to take away some of the blemishes because if I want to start taking away these blemishes, it will take a lot of time. So I'll just do that and it will take just a few seconds and uh, every single blemishes will be off and it will be on a new layout. So I can decide to paint in some of them back or just leave it like that. So let's wait. I hope this microphone is sounding loud. Let me just keep it close to my mouth and see. So beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. It did a lot of jobs on this image. So look at the entire image. Here is your before. Here is your after. Before and after it has done a lot of cleaning for me already. So I'll merge everything into a new layout. I like merging so that in case I have problem at a particular point, I can go back and touch that point. So now I would retouch the image. Mind you, I always say retouch, retouch Academy has the best action. It has the best action because the actions are always giving you that thing that you're looking for is not it doesn't fail no matter the system no matter the environment it doesn't fail so let's sorry let's start painting so i have a video that teaches how to paint the 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 direction to paint to the diagram on how to paint i have a video on that 
So you can go back and watch that video if you have problem with retouching. So So I will leave the stock image I will leave this image for whosoever would like to try it out for me to see whosoever would like to try this effect for me to see i forgot to paint this part but it's not too late i can still paint it i mean use the blur to fade it so so when i brush i normally zoom out to see if i have made a mistake so that i can correct it because I'm not expecting to just do a perfect job in one paint. So I normally go back and front to make sure everything is good. So I think this is good enough for me. So just because of the class, I will not want to waste the whole time trying to go through that slow process of trying to retouch to perfection, I will just merge everything together in a new layout. Then I will go back and paint that place, the place that I forgot to brush for the blur. So I will just touch it. The more I touch it, the more it becomes blur. Do this side also. Because remember, I want, I want it to look very realistic. I don't want it to look like, ah, they didn't cut the image very well. So all this part, you can blur it more and more. So let's paint and paint. So, like for this and I think this part is coming out too much. So I can go back to liquify and use a um, normal brush to just push it in a little. For those of you who know how fingers are, you know that that thing is possible. You know it's very, very possible to have a finger that is not straight. So let's paint here, paint. I'm still painting. Okay, so at this point, I would just um, go back to Reblom, one of the plugins I told you about. It's also a retouching. It, the work of this plugin is to also help me retouch this image very well. So I've already done the retouching. The plugin should just help me look for imperfections and uh, just help me touch them. So we are just waiting for the image for the plugins to load. So we just say okay. When you say okay, you can check your your before and your after. So I can mask it and paint it off this nose area because I really don't I don't like what is doing there. Okay. So we are good to go. So remember, we move from here to here, here to here. That's because we want to create this effect. If we, if, if we never had the plan of creating this effect, just cleaning this image alone will be very, very fine. So the next thing we want to do is match our skin. So I normally use magic skin. I'll say cancel. I'll go back and click it again. Open it, select a color from the skin. 
say okay maybe increase this a little for the purpose of this class so you can see it then i can just cancel out of there come to retouch for me click on skin mask and retouch it will help me select the skin so i will not be wasting all the time trying to select the skin so what that will do for me is to just select the skin so let's wait while it's done so now it's done with the selecting so we just copy the skin selection hold on out and copy it and place it on the skin sorry click and delete this then say okay so once you do that you can check your mask if it's okay if you feel there are some areas that are not supposed to be there you can just paint them off if you think there are areas that are supposed to be there that are not selected you select them and add them then i think the selection that it did for me i think the selection is very okay i don't have any problem with the selection so i'll just go off that mask then still push push this up a little then so here is our before here is our after you can see the changes before and after so the next thing i want to do is um uh, i want to use maybe um selective color add a little more red sorry add a little more red bring this down add a little yellow and bring this down a little sorry sorry uh, keep this here uh -huh. then bring this down so it's always necessary that when you when you finish your image make sure you you do you do like um like you save your preset so that next time you can use it so let's go to yellow and do the same bring this up bring this down a little bring this this way so we have what you're seeing here then we can now come to blacks i'm pushing the blacks a little possible bring this up then you have what you're seeing here then the next thing we want to do is create an s curve so i have my s bring this up bring this down bring this up bring this like this now when you do your s curve like this it becomes a problem so i normally just change it to luminosity so that i'll still get the that details i'm looking at so so i cannot come back here and maybe just pop the the red a little more then bring down the luminosity mask a little then i want to create that shine so i'll come here click on sorry click on basic it will help me select some areas in our plus i think this amount of plus is enough then i will just click on curve to increase it then i'll create a group on that click on alt and mask it then i will just add it to the areas i want it to shine So here is your before, here is your after. The shine is, is shining. Before and your after. You can still merge it again. Then come to retouch for me. Take this off. Let's go to um, portrait volume and create portrait volume and see what portrait volume will give to us. So when you want to create images like this, 
Another thing I notice is that you have to be very, very patient. You have to, you have to keep calm. You have to keep calm while trying to create something like this. Right? Keeping calm is a good thing. So it's still loading. What this is also going to do is to increase the amount of shine in your image. So let's wait. It's not like that kind of heavy shine. But look at it. Your before, your after. Your before, your your after. It has a shine in some other places also. Your before, your after. So you now have an image that is shiny. You now have a shiny image. So let's merge everything together. This is the point where you go back to the answer if you have one. If you have the answer, you just click on it and use it to glorify, sorry, to beautify your, your creation. You see? Very nice colors. Very nice colors that you can just pop into your work and... Uh, I like I like this color because this is something I'm already creating. I'm already creating the job with this color. So let me say okay. So I'll just reduce it maybe about 30%, merge it to a new layout, then go back there again. Because um I want to color grade it in a way somebody cannot just look at the image and say, ah, I can do that color grade now. No, this is not I can do that color grade kind of job. Because of how, how many colors are here, a lot of times I even I don't even know which one to use. This is not bad. This is not bad. This is also not bad. I think I'll go with this one. So I'll just say okay. So we have this amazing finished work of art. We started from the bottom now we're here we started from the bottom now we're here so this can even go for an album art this can go for an album art something very nice so if you still have interest of cleaning cleaning the eyes we just go to clean eye with magic eyes now you see the tools that i keep using these tools are just here to just make the job easy for me let me show you let me use this time out to show you something that this tool can do First of all, let me clean the eyes. The reason why this is nice is because this can even help you clean your eye vessels, smoothing the eyes. So your eyes will not be like, there are a lot of stretch marks in your eyes. Just clean that. Once you do that, for me, I normally reduce my opacity because I still want the realness of the eyes to come back. Then from here, if you feel like you want to change the color of the eyes, you can change it. I don't know if you're seeing it, but trust me, you can change it. Then add lights, um, paint lights, sorry. Uh, let's paint light into the eyes. Uh, Long, long ago, when I started doing this Photoshop work, because I was a photo manipulator, I was doing a lot of these things to just make the eye look like there are rays in the eyes. So I can then reduce it so that it can blend into the eyes. Maybe just use blur and blur it in a little. Uh -huh. So for our, our color of eyes, we can now change the color to whichever color we like. I think I'll leave it around here. I think I'll leave it around here. Then just keep it like this, reduce the opacity. Then I'm good to go. The next thing I'll just do, maybe just put in my watermark. Put in my watermark. I know one day somebody will ask me how I did this. But until then, here you go. So let's sharpen the image and export. Let's sharpen our image and export. 
so please if you have any question about this that you did any part you didn't get right please drop it on the comment section i would make sure i would check it out and um, answer your question and maybe do some other videos like this as time goes but once again thank you very much for sticking to the video if you have watched the video to this point you are worthy to be called a fan thank you very much and i'll see you in my next video